guys. Well, today I want to do a little bit of a different video. And I know some of you guys aren't going to like it, and that's okay. This is just a part of me sharing with you folks. Um, it seems like no matter if I do any type of different video other than me doing bushcraft or survival or making a fire or anything like that, I, seems, I seem to get a few thumbs down and some stuff. And you know, that's okay. I'm just, uh, every once in a while I'm going to throw out a video there that's not it's just a little bit different than the stuff that I normally do, like shooting my gun or something like that. You know, we're not all one-sided. We have many different areas in our life, and this is one of my areas in my life. Today, I just want to do kind of a, um, a day in the life of. So this is a day in the life of Larry Roberts, okay? This is going to be a typical Saturday for us. You saw the temperature. I don't know if the sun was hitting my thermometer or what, but it was 7 degrees about 10 minutes ago, and now it's negative 1. So... It got a little, you know, it had, we had a little temperature drop, or like I said, the sun was hitting the thermometer, one of the two. Well, so, um, we need to bring in wood, and we need to bring in corn. We have to go purchase our corn uh, in town, and today's Valentine's Day, 2015. But anyway, I'm just going to show you just how we bring in wood for the week. And it's just me and the wife. I'm still gimped up. So I'm going to try to throw in maybe a couple of tips or tricks in this video too, so it's not just, you know, so it's not maybe too boring. I mean, I'm going to just kind of going to throw myself out there and kind of share a little bit of uh, a typical day in central Minnesota in the wintertime. So, all right, guys. I thought I'd just show you guys what I made my wife for Valentine's Day. That's her flower she gets. And right away, I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek of a new knife that I got. I'm not going to do the review quite yet, but we all recognize that leather, right? Justin Wolf from Greyer Wolf. I try to spread my business around because um, I like to support small businesses. And I try to buy different, you know, whether it be, you know, whatever, clothes, whatever. I try to spread my business around. With leather, there's one guy I go to, and that's it. That's Justin. Okay, here's my knife. Formerly Primal Edge. Now it's Black Feather. Joe Honeycutt. Nice beefy handle, exactly what I wanted. That's what I made this feather stick with. So anyway, sneak peek, guys. You'll see more of this knife in the future for sure. That's a curl that knife did. It wasn't too bad. Okay guys, we need to fill her up. Wish some of you guys could come out here and help. No corn in the buckets either. We got some pellets to get her started. Okay, before we go outside and start the four-wheeler to start loading in some wood, on my um, video response to um, Abraham, someone asked me how I lit the match one-handed. So I've got a book of matches. They said they couldn't see, and I, I saw that. It wasn't a very good view. So to light up one-handed paper match, I just take the match and fold it over, and then it reaches the striker. Okay, and then I take my thumb and put it on the match head and then just scrape against the striker. You want to be careful doing that once in a while. The match head will kind of break apart and leave part of it on your thumb, which kind of hurts because it's burning <laughs> on your thumb. Um, anyway, I'll try to turn the camera around and show you real quick. Okay, so here I have my match. I'm going to rotate the book over. Flame likes to go up, so I'm going to make sure when I let go the match goes up. I'm going to grab a hold of the striker with my thumb and try to move it across 
that way across this striker. Okay, I'll do another one because it's hard to do this with the camera, I'm trying to show for the camera. And it helps if you use the ones on the edges, okay? The ones in the middle sometimes can be a pain because there's not as much room with the match. I'm going to try to strike this one up. Ooh, and that one just popped. It didn't do nothing. So it doesn't always work. Maybe try to rotate the match. There we go. My clothes when I do chores are completely different than the clothes that I wear when I'm going out into the woods and practicing bushcraft or doing camping or something like that. When I'm bringing in wood, I don't want... Our bushcrafting clothes or my bushcrafting clothes um, wear just fine so long as you're not doing abrasive type tasks against it. In other words, that wood is going to scrape up against like my boreal shirt or something like that. I don't want to ruin it, you know, I mean it's just too nice of a garment. So I've got... Um, a little more work-oriented type clothes on, you know, this denim stuff, this duck cloth, whatever. My pants are still my nice wool um, Korean War era type pants, you know, I don't need long johns with them on, they're great. But for my upper layers, and especially I'm just running out to do chores real quick, it's just basically put as much clothes on as you can. <laughs> and then it's below zero, so I got my hat on. If you guys live in, you, if you live in the north, you probably already know. If you live down south and you seem to be having troubles finding a hat, Get yourself a Mad Bomber. <clears throat> They're expensive. They're 50, 60, 70 bucks. I don't even know. I bought this a long time ago. I'm almost sweating in this thing right now. I almost have to, I have to unclip it. It's just, it's flipping hot. And it's, like you saw, it's one below. And so, but it's a dry cold. Yeah. And the wind's not blowing. The other day I was out here, it was like 15, and the wind was just whistling. And it was way worse than it is right now. You guys that live in those wind blown states, and it's not exactly like Minnesota is a still state, you know, it's not exactly like we don't have wind. But you guys that are on the, like the plains and stuff that have the wind, oh good lord, I would not enjoy that at all. So, anyway, alright, let's wait for this four-wheeler to warm up and we'll go hook up the trailer and get some wood in the house.
good that I can work. I can do all this. Winston, you got your shoes on? Your shoes and your sweater? You look super comfortable. Man, you're rocking. Winston, where you at? How's that, how's that treating you there, bud? Usually two of these trailer loads will do us for a week. And in case you didn't know, this is oak firewood. So I had to shed my coat, it's pretty warm with when you get active and stuff. And as far as wearing these these pants without long johns or anything, these are usually good to about single digits to like now if, or you know, I'm fine right now, but if I were going to sleep out here or if I was gonna spend basically all day out here, I'd probably wanna switch to my German pants or put some long johns or something on them. These are a little, this these pants I got right now, they're just a little bit shorter than some of my other ones. So there's a draft goes up my legs. So, you know, it's a tiny bit chilly, but uh, if you're active or, you know, for a day or something like that, these are perfectly fine. Watch out. 
Alright guys, well, we loaded up our wood trough or whatever, now we gotta go get some corn. The place where we usually go get it. This year the guy that normally delivers it blew a head gasket in his truck, so he can't deliver it. But I usually go through about, I don't know, 14, 15,000 pounds of corn a year. So we need to go buy some corn from this farm store. It's a little bit more expensive, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But about, we go through about 500 pounds of corn a week, so we're gonna go get at least 500 pounds. If I can fit 1,000 pounds in the back of my wife's car, then or you know, Jeep or whatever, then we'll do that. Um, we're on our way, it's Valentine's Day. We're on our way, we're gonna go out to eat. We're kinda old fuddy-duddies, we eat pretty early, so three o'clock for dinner is just fine with me, and if we have leftovers, we'll bring it home or whatever. Well, the restaurant, 70 miles away, so we got a little driving ahead of us. Anyway, hope you liked the video. Like I said, I, I'm sure I'm sure I'm gonna get some thumbs downs on it. This is just kind of letting you in a little bit into my life. I was gonna show you some tent stakes that I was gonna make. Um, basically, it's it's a six inch eye bolt, and that worked really good for me this winter camping in the frozen ground. You got a nice you know nice circle you can tie your little tags, your little loop of your bank line and stuff to, and then you can just feed that through your tarp grommet and then just put the, your toggle at the end of that. And I was gonna just, I bought a brand new bench grinder a couple weeks ago and I just barely kind of put it together. I don't know if it's if it's too cold out for it or what, but it doesn't work, so now I gotta take that back too. So we got a little a day of running around out in the city. So I'm gonna get changed and get going. Look forward to going out to eat. Hope you guys have a good one and as Mr. T would say, Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Bye. Okay guys, one last thing here. So we went out to eat, we had a great time, fantastic Thai restaurant. And like I said, this, you know, we're not all just one-sided. There's more facets of our lives than just sometimes what we show on YouTube and stuff with just the bushcrafting and the survival and stuff like that. There was an Asian market right next to the Thai restaurant and this is what we got. I love trying new things. I love ethnic foods. I'm not afraid to try stuff. A lot of folks in my area, if it doesn't have gravy dripped on it, they don't like it. Not me. I'm willing to try a lot of different stuff. So, anyway guys, like I said, I know some of you aren't going to like this, but I hope some of you do. Alright, take care.